This conference will now be recorded.
Hallo, Lüt. Hallo, hi, Niraj. Hi, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling better now. Thanks. So, did you try it yesterday? Uh, the you know the CF template. Yes, yes, I tried that, and also I was looking into that uh, AWS Quick Start, the ready templates which are available. So I was yeah. just browsing yeah. through to get the idea. Yeah. So, uh, you tried any template there? Yes. Great. So this is very important. Like when designing any kind of infrastructure, this kind of things is very helpful. Right. I saw like many companies have came forwarded and provided their different uh, templates. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So for better integration and you know for different purpose. Yeah. Whatever basically do companies like if they want to have if they are looking for a product, uh, uh, if they want to deploy their product uh, into multiple for multiple eight uh, clients, like a single product for multiple clients. Then what they do? They create multiple AWS account and they, uh, you know, replicate the entire infrastructure. Now, what happens from uh, their side? How they get benefit is like when they have multiple AWS account, when they have multiple infrastructure, they uh, group all these different AWS account to their AWS account. That is one master AWS account, and the other client accounts are the sub account. And whatever the charges that they are going to pay in the, you know. For example, there is one client uh, whose monthly estimation, uh, whose monthly uh, billing is let's say three hundred dollars. So that three hundred dollars again another client three hundred dollars. So when this three hundred plus three gets, uh, when they aggregate and pass to it their master node, that is passed to their master account, they get discount on that master account because the uh, the account is going to pay from every uh, payment is going to th go through the master account. So at the master account, they get the more benefit from the AWS side. So that's why they use this cloud formation template to you know deploy it to multiple clients, regions, etc. So okay, today, so I have a question. So so when you when you said like in this kind of scenario, like when they replicate from their master node, so it's like a sub account. So how the corporate or the big companies want to take over once they implement for them? Uh, I, I didn't get that question. No, I mean in these clients like implement for the clients, right? From the master account, that what you said. Yeah. Yeah. So how the other companies take over once they implement like a sub account? Because they need to have their own, right? Why they want to yeah. go for the sub account? No, no, they don't go for their own. Basically, for example, if uh, my company is something that provides you a product, like a product, let's say a fund manager system. Okay, then uh, you don't have such kind of access to the system. You will have only access to your console where your data will be interacted. Okay, you are just getting a product. Now, whatever at the back end is happening, the servers, the storage, and etc., that is on the AWS side, which is taken care by me. Now, it doesn't matter that uh, whether I am maintaining your data center, your entire infrastructure in my AWS account, or I am creating a new AWS account and I provide you a special service for that. So this is the uh, different business models. Okay, so you can always create like sub account and then you can yes. separate the sub account from the main account. Yes, this is called AWS organization. Okay. So, uh, right. So shall we start now then? Sure. So the first service that we'll see today is a Kinesis. So Kinesis is a streaming service. Uh, basically, whatever the real-time data you want to fetch from the share market, from any video streaming, or uh, from uh, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, you can use this uh, Kinesis service to stream your real-time data. Amazon Kinesis make it easy to collect, process, and analyze real-time uh, streaming data so that you can get timely insights and react quickly to new information. Like nowadays, if you see the elections, then most of the uh, parties are using this Kinesis service to get the real time data from the social media. Like how many people from which region they are talking about, which, uh, you know, uh, how they are influencing their, uh, you know, state wise, country wise, where they need to more focus on it and where their uh, market is very high. 
so in 2000 uh, i do remember the uh, exactly year but last time when trump was elected he used the same services to get from where he wants to focus more on from where he wants to do marketing campaigns and etc and this time also uh, indian government is using this kind of technologies to get insights from the social media where they want to uh, focus on it so using this uh, information from collecting this information from the social media and other streaming platform they get this kind of insights uh, and you get a complete real life scenario like a, a web design console where you can see how in a graph wise in a chart wise where and what kind of information you want so kinesis will help you to stream your data raw data which you can process uh, there is another aws services is available where you can process this data and then you can showcase in a graphical format amazon kinesis offer key capabilities to cost effectively process streaming data at any scale so again this is the amazon managed service so here you don't need to worry about uh, if the workload increases if you are getting more data then you need to increase the size of your capacity so this is amazon managed service so it will automatically grow and meet the requirement whatever it is with amazon kinesis you can enjoy ingest real time data such as video audio application logs backlist stream and iot telemetry data for machine learning analytics and other application like if you know that the, the food delivery system or the cab or uh, cab system everything once they have logged once they have the accepted your request to process you get a chart you get a graph, you know map how the cab or the uh, you know that delivery guy is uh, traveling and how far it is from your location right we get in a very uh, you know graphical format in the map on the, over the map so what happens basically is once the user has accepted to uh, for your service it continuously send the gps location the it is based on the iot technology and then what it does is it continuously sends you the gps location the latitude and longitude that latitude and longitude is fetched by the kinesis and then it is processed and shown in the graphical format on over the map that this person is traveling in this, this location so based on this gps technology it continuously sends the latitude and longitude and that Uh, data is then processed and show on the map. So in this way, this kind of uh, uh, services work. So benefits that is, you have a real-time data. Whatever the real-time data you want to fetch, you can fetch it via this uh, Kinesis service. It's a fully managed service. Where you can just you need to just log into your AWS console, uh, search for this Kinesis service, and you have complete control on your application. And it's totally scalable. you don't need to worry about if the uh, if you are getting a high spikes of data if you are getting a large number of data at any moment it will automatically scale and grow the market uh, and meet the market, uh, requirements now there are four types of streaming uh, kinesis available first is kinesis video stream where can amazon kinesis video stream make it easy to securely stream video from connected device to aws for analytical machine learning and other processing so if you want to stream any video streams then you can use this kind of uh, kinesis video stream which is specifically designed for video purpose second is the data stream if you want to uh, capture in kind of logs or any kind of uh, real time data uh, which is gigabytes of data per se it has a capability Uh, from hundreds of thousands of sources so it has a capability to take, take the to take the streams of data to capture the data for number of sources and it has a cap capability of gigabytes of data per second so for example if uh, like a stock market or uh, you know that uh, cryptocurrency all this thing whenever you have such kind of uh, you know uh, a website or a application that fetches this this kind of real time data at that time you can use this kinesis to get the data from the actual source of information so you can compare this multiple source of information from uh, national stock exchange or bombay stock exchange in india we have this too so you can compare this data you can put on your uh, application then the third one is data firewalls a data firewalls is the easiest way to capture transfer and load data streams into aws data for near real time analytics and existing business intelligence tool 
now if you want to capture the data and to provide some insights uh, what will the future uh, you know future analytics processes and the business tool for business intelligence you can use this data firewalls now the future that it has is in the data file it has a capability to to transform the data for example if you are taking a log and to process the log into more readable format that you can customize or you can put it to another uh, you know a uh, database system that is dms database management system you can send it to the that service and then transform back to the kinesis all these things you can do with that database uh, data fire hose so for transforming of data for uh, uh, processing of this data you can use the kinesis fire hose for data streaming there is a kinesis data sync for video processing we have kinesis video streams and the last one is the data analytics that is amazon data analytics is the easiest way to process the data in real time with sql or java without having to learn a new programming language or process framework so here you don't need to worry about designing an application that will showcase you how your data is processing the analytics is part the visual the visualization so it has a capability to uh, capture the data and store in the sql you can also send it to dms if you want to do any further modification in your database and without having uh, designing such kind of application all the things will be directly happening so here kinesis cannot be considered as a serverless but kinesis can be considered as a a platform as a service aws is giving you platform where you can just uh, uh, use this service to install uh, to just uh, connect with your streaming uh, platform and get your data okay so basically we don't have any lab session on this uh, this is purely theoretical part do you have any questions on the kinesis no i mean if you can just show me on the aws console where it is and how we can utilize this uh, kinesis you can just use this kinesis service there is dice service available We can get started, and from here you can choose which kind of uh, streaming service you want: data stream, content delivery stream, uh, video stream, or analytics uh, service. Now you require some source of information to uh, get this data. So let's say we want to do it the video stream. So we can do it like a YouTube or something. Uh, yeah, you can do on the YouTube. You need to first raise a support ticket at the YouTube, and uh, they will give you an API. uh you know the api that you can connect to this video stream now that is is called you youtube api for the instagram if you can connect to your instagram api and it is freely available like for the developers and that you can connect to your uh, video streams there okay so our next service is elastic beanstalk now elastic beanstalk is service like right, which will provide you the entire uh, platform here like if if you remember our ec2 section we create an ec2 instance then we uh, uh, put them behind an uh, elastic load balancer and we create an auto scaling group to so that it can easily scale right now in this part you can do it without configuring anything this is again a computing power but this is completely uh, designed for the platform as a service here every infrastructure that is ec2 creation of ec2 running that uh, apache server php and etc all these things done by the aws now apart from this creation of load balancer putting them into behind the load balancer and creating an auto scaling group that part is also done by the elastic beanstalk so here your job is to just put the, to give the sample code or you can upload your own code and just run it so here okay, you can see get started with a 3g step first select a platform which platform do you want to choose php java go language whichever you uh, want to choose this kind of platform then upload your code and run it that's it this is a very simple and this is called as a platform as well so let's see this click on get started So are you showing me like any sample, like a simple application of code to run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here you can give just a name of your application, and here you can choose uh, what kind of platform you want. That is 
uh, Python to be PHP or whatever you want to select. Let's go to simple PHP one. And here you can select this code whether it's a sample application you want to run or do you want to run your own code. So as of now, I don't have any code here. I will go with the sample application. Now you have two options now that I create an application with the basic configuration. If you want to configure more in details, then you can click on here. Now it comes with a three option that is the low cost which will say that they will be only single EC2 instance and no load balancer and no auto scaling will be provided. Okay, this is come with us saying a low cost, which is free tier eligible. If you want to have a high ability zone, then it will come with a load balancer, auto scaling and everything. And the custom configuration, like if you want to provide any custom configuration, then you can do. Now, the first part is instance. That is if you click on modify, then which instance app do you want? Let's go with the T2 micro. Then you can select the AMI. If you want to have specific U12 or any kind of AMI, then you can select it here. Root volume type, that is uh, volume type that we used to go always with the SSD, general purpose. And how many storage you want? Let's say 10 GB. Now, EC2 security group, which security group? These are the security group which we have already created in our VPC in our my particular this Mumbai region. So in this region, which security group I want to attach? Let's click on this in security group and click on save. Next part, capacity. That is load balancing, load balance. Uh, so no, this is a auto scaling group. So how you want to scale your EC2 instance? It is from one instance to four. Already zoned any, or do you want this specific one? Then scaling trigger when to scale. Let's say when the CPU utilization reaches to uh, to some of thirty six minimum units percent. So you can see here yes, sixty percent and lower. 50% lower than 300%. So if it is reaches to more than 50% utilization, then it will uh, create new EC2 instance. And if it is goes less than 30 EC2, uh, 30 percent of utilization, it will delete the EC2 instance whichever newly created. So here you can define this period and etc. We can save. Right. Then there is a part of a load balancer. Which type of load balancer you want? Application, classic, or network? Then here you can choose uh, the load balancer listener process. That is a where uh, where you want to this kind of things to be action. Like is the health check. So you can provide as a health check path. Then rules. If you want to specify any rules, store your store logs. So whatever the Amazon uh, this platform is taking the logs do you want to enable this kind of logs and if you want enable then where you want to store that logs so there is the option of st bucket so enabling this option will cost you standard s3 charges supply so whatever the charges to for storing the data will be there it will be applicable just go with this save and similar way you can manage this kind of things rolling updates and deployment uh, when you want to deploy this policy uh, rolling updates how if there is a new uh, PHP version is coming, then do you want to uh, enable that option or not? Security group, that is a virtual key pair. If you want to attach any IAM role, you can attach it here. Key pairs here, which key pair you want. An instance profile, again, the, the role at the instance, that instance is capable of doing such kind of actions. That is easy to, to have a pool access to S3. And similarly, if you want to get notification, manage updates, uh, monitoring the basic one that is CloudWatch monitoring, this is a set to the basic. And the network part, if you want to be a part of into, give into a custom VPC, then you can select from here in which ability zone. It's called 1A, 1B. Do you want to assign the public IP or not? We don't require because we are having an, uh, you know, that. Uh, Elastic load balancer, so we don't require to have a public IP here. 
we'll just click on save invalid option no. okay so submit or this is for the load balancer so the for load balancer will use one a and here will choose one and one b then everything vpc is configured now database if you want to modify if you want to connect to your database you can select it here and tag so once you have configured everything you can just click on create app now i have a question like you can create the entire infrastructure once you go to the easy to then load balancer and auto scaling and from here you can directly create your environment for your application so for which one you should go and when you should go for this uh, elastic bin stock and when you should go for the ec2 alp and auto scaling i mean when you're doing it from the scratch right so i mean you can you can design your infrastructure through vpc and all but when you want to deploy the application right since we are yeah, the application even if you are trying to do from the scratch then also we will deploy definitely an application whether it's a two day uh, application or three day application we will always do that part yeah i mean we can also do it through the cloud formation right yeah that is different part that is creation of again resources whatever hmm. the resources that we are creating uh, either at a aws console or yeah, via using a infrastructure as a core but the question here is when you should go for uh, elastic beanstalk that is a ready made environment and when you should go for scratch for designing your environment i think depend depend on the environment what kind of environment you are doing like staging or production uh no at that time also you have completely control on configuring what kind of configuration you want i mean what okay. you can do but i'm not sure okay there is some errors here that is tag me this aborted operation current state state field reason the problem. that is load balances and the security code failed to perform okay i will just figure out what is the problem and you can just think about it when to use which service let's just uh, i mean um, here here you can you know mostly you are selecting things right let's say you are selecting uh, existing subnet you are uh, selecting security group but you know we we already created that right that's why it's available right i mean no, otherwise always has a vpc available and if you want to create uh, create a new ec2 instance then also you can do right so so what's the question like the question is for what kind of application you should go for the elastic beanstalk and for what kind of uh, you know uh, application you should go from starting from the scratch and doing these things what kind of application yeah of course like uh, if i if i want to do everything uh, if i everything ready for me that is in the elastic bin stock then i will mm -hmm. never go to the ec2 section and create such kind of headache mm -hmm. right so then what is the purpose of having a ec2 separate service elastic bin stock and auto scaling because uh, similarly if you know see that uh, load balancer you can also create your own load balancer by creating an uh, ec2 instance and putting the application behind it and the same service that aws is also offering you that is elb now what yeah. makes that the similar the difference is like having your own infrastructure and having a platform as a service which is managed by the aws mm -hmm. okay now the difference is like when you are running an application which doesn't require to have frequent changes or you know continuous updates whenever it doesn't require such kind of actions at that time only this kind of beanstalk is uh, helpful like we have a small infrastructure or uh, you can say a blogging site example wordpress okay for wordpress you don't require to configure again and again or you did uh, whenever a new feature comes in you don't need to work on this because this is a ready made applications available to you what changes you do is uh, posting new uh, new new blogs so that is not a part that you will just go to the ec2 instance and do this kind of configuration that you can do at the web also right 
So for this kind of infrastructure, when you are not uh, continuously uh, connecting to your EC2 instance, not connecting to your infra uh, infrastructure, at that time having the this kind of platform as a service is very helpful. But when you have to design your entire infrastructure with your customization, that is, you are designing your own product, which will require PHP, MySQL, etc., other features, and then you will uh, have continuous deployment in that uh, uh, EC2 instance. You will continuously, you know, upgrade that service. You will optimize that service. At that time, having this kind of platform with Elastic install is not suitable. At that time, you need to have you need to design your entire infrastructure from the scratch. So there is, this is the two difference. So when your application is very small, uh, like a WordPress blog, where you are not interacting with your EC2 instance again and again. Once it is deployed, you don't need to worry about it. At that time, you can use this stock kind of service. But when you are continuously interacting with your EC2 instance, uh, at that time, having an infrastructure at the EC2 level that is very important. Okay. All right. So this is still error that uh, it is error in the load balancer and the AWS security group. And the dashboard. Creating security group name and fail reason resource creation cancel. Creating load balancer fail. At least two submit in two different algorithms must be okay. So the the condition with the what is the condition with the application load balancer? Do you remember uh, that part? Yeah. Two different zones, right? Yeah, you require two different zones, and I, I have selected only one. So that's why it gave me an error. Okay. Okay, let's just go to the configuration now and the load balancer section. Network and load balancer subnet that is two subnets here and two subnets for the instance. I need to wait. Now, whatever the service that it is creating, you will also find in the EC2 section. That is one EC2 instance is created in the load balancer and auto scaling. Now, the entire infrastructure is not yet created. That's why we are not getting information. We will get here. It's generating all the load balancer and other stuff. Maybe that's why yeah, I'm trying to create uh, the creation of all the services. That's why. And now, once the error is occurred, now what it will do? It will roll back all the action. Whatever the security code, EC2 instance, whatever has been created as of now, it will roll back every action. That's why it's taking a long time. The same as like a creation of via cloud formation. So basically, whenever you say it create, it generates a cloud formation also. See, this is already created, and uh, you can see here uh, the cloud formation stack and the same. The error is with Elastic Load Balancer 
and the security group. So basically, whatever you do in the last sleep install, at that time also, it automatically generates this kind of script, uh, the template, and it will do all these things. So both things can I occur parallelly, it will also show on the cloud formation. Yeah. Basically, whatever you do on the Elastic Beanstalk, that automatically creates this kind of uh, template. And with this template, it will create the resource. So basically, now if I click on create tag and whatever the parameter option that I get, right? Uh, I have shown you know, my own template that is I have designed. In the template, we have a list of parameters. Now the same list of parameters that we see here is in the configuration section, right? Whatever the configuration that you set, it goes to the cloud formation. That is in the parameter section. You can see the all the upfronts, all what is the instance triumphs and etc. And then it triggers the template. This template it has already designed its own template. Yeah, you can see. And from this cloud formation, all the resources is created. Taking too much time. Let's do one thing. Let's create one more. So now here you can see there are two environments. First is web server environment, and second is worker environment. A web server environment is something that when you want to just run a website, a web application which is very small and which requires to have HTTP request. Now this web server comes with a, again easy to install load balancer and auto scaling. But a worker environment is something that requires workers to process the data. So with respect to your EC2 instance, load balancer and auto scaling, in this work environment, you also get a queuing system. So now depending upon your uh, you know, application, you can use this kind of environments. We we'll go with the web server. Uh, demo environment, let's say, test. Okay. Fine. Configure, PHP, sample application, configure more options and here I can say custom one again same thing and GP so the security group save capacity whatever it is already configured let's go with that save load balancer application load balancer process and save now rolling update security install security group mumbai key pair that's it save monitoring i don't want manage updates notification network Public two ability zone for load balancer and two ability zone for my EC2 instance. Let's go and assign a public IP also. Let's hit on create environment. Now in the ERB, you get one DNS endpoint, which is a single point of contact for all the web servers. In a similar way, you will also get one endpoint that is Elastic Binpoint endpoint, uh, which you can trigger and check your application. Creating success uh, security group, creating target group, and it will create all the other part. 
yeah, you can see on one more is creating security group created elastic band load balancer is created then it's creating more and more services now it's now creating auto scaling group Okay, now you can see there is an elastic load manager which is automatically created and my load balancer section in the security group. I can see a target group, there is one target group available in the launch config. There is one launch config is also available. Then the auto scaling group, there is one auto scaling group is also available. If I click on instance, then one instance is also created with a test. And it has public assign or, or the IP with the Linux security group, which I attach and all the environments, right? Now, Cloud Watch Alarm is created. Now, here you can see there is a one URL, which is the endpoint to your Winstock application. You can copy this and paste in the browser, still not uh, created. Launching the EC2 instance, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's already launched. So it will take a, a few. So this is how your website will look like. But this is currently I have, uh, you know, part just the IP address of the EC2 instance. But we will use this uh, endpoint to test our connection. So it will take few more seconds. Okay. Now you can say the health is green. Now if I click on this URL. It says the congratulation your AWS Elastic Windstock PHP application is now running on your own dedicated environment in the AWS cloud. You are running PHP version 10.2.17. Right now, if you want to up upload your own code, you can click on upload and deploy. You can choose a file that is a zip file and it will automatically install the part. Right. So there are two configuration. One, you can do everything from the scratch. And this is a platform as a service which you can use to design your entire infrastructure. Just apart from your VPC and all the things that you need to do it manually. But with respect to the EC2, uh, ELB and auto scaling, this can be done via this platform as a service uh, service. So any question in this part, you can also try this. Uh, this will under if you choose a T2 micro again here, then it will not charge you. But once you are done, uh, you should uh, delete whenever it not required. Okay, now so I have if you upload like any, let's say WordPress zip file or something. So it's gonna deploy, right? Right. So let's do one thing. Uh, Free HTML templates. Uh, which one? Let's say this one. Click on download. Now, already this is a, a zip file, but sometimes it will not come with zip. So there is a one folder that is at grip zip file. I will upload this one to my test environment. Upload. Choose file and this one. 
sample application one, whatever the name you want to give and click on deploy. So it will upload that files, all the files in my web server. You can also connect to your EC2 instance via this uh, public IP and then check your database. Environment update is starting. So this will upload an EC2 instance EBS volume, right? Yeah, whatever the uh, upload that you have done just now, that will be uploaded to your EC2 instance, which we can see on the Elastic Load Balancer endpoint. Here, yeah, updating process, and if you see events, then what is update? Cloud Manager weight con condition handle, auto scaling group, then some weight conditions. Something is happening. For better, you don't have permission to access the server, it will take few seconds now. Or is Basically, it like, uh, do we need to change the permission like ch mode for the file or no? You don't need to do any kind of these things. So it will uh, deploy in the HTML folder by itself? Yeah, it will deploy the part. Okay, now it is completed. If I click again, uh, you don't have permission to access on the server. Why? Let's connect it. Okay, so possible reason is when it says forbidden, then if I click on here and say EDGREWS, correct? EDG press, EDG press. Okay, now we can see our data. The reason is like the it uh, has created a folder. If I show you, this is my PWD, this is my where www.html. And in the actual folder, it has created one folder and inside that folder, all the files is there. And that is the reason that uh, here we don't have any index.html file and that's why it was not showing. But even if I say uh, whatever the your uh, link is, that is the endpoint, endpoint slash edg uh, press, then it shows me the entire website now. Did you get this part right now? Yeah. Okay, the changes is in the path, that's why. Now you can do this configuration, just you need to go to the target group. And if you see the target is also not healthy now, yeah, for sure, the target is on also now. It says unhealthy. So what you need to do is, you need to change the edit the health. Why am I saying unhealthy? Yeah, because on the web, web server, that is whenever we hit to the end point, we are not getting the traffic, right? We are not able to see our website. That's why. But if I change to slash edg press, now it will check whether that file, uh, whether the index.html file and everything is available or not. So it will take few seconds. So where it will say is forbidden, then at the time we need to just say edg press you get your website it will probably take some time based on the health check like interval after 50 every 50 second and if we get three healthy ratio like 15 plus 3 15 plus 5 20 20 20 20 it will take one minute completely to know So in this way, this uh, Elastic Bizstock works.
Hello? Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, sorry. The power was cut out. That's why. So this is all about the Elastic Beanstalk. You can create your environment here and you can work on like this. Now make sure once you are done, click on action. If you want to, uh, you know, uh, if you want to clone this entire environment for future purpose, then you can do. If you don't want, then just terminate this environment entire. And to terminate this environment, you need to provide the name of the environment that is test. Terminate. See what I will do here. Now, our third service is that we will look. Today is also left with the application services, right? Yeah, application service. So before that, we will see yeah, we'll see one two more services like cloud train first. Did you already covered the cloud front? No, that's uh, that is also we are covering today. Okay. So first is CloudTrail. That is which CloudTrail is a service that you can create events on your AWS account, which means like if any uh, whatever the API actions that is creating that is happening, all the things that you can maintain. Like for example, you have a team of ten people, and whatever these ten people are trying to access to the AWS services, all the things will be maintained here. So if any person is trying to exit to the EC2, this kind of thing will be meted. Now, if you can see here, this is the event time, which is just now. That this from this access key, it doesn't matter. In this region, and what kind of event it is done is update tag. That is, uh, as I am the root user of this account, that is the username is root, that is trying to update the tag. And this kind of thing is happened via this cloud formation. This is not that something I did for my just going to the console and did. This is something that is happened via this uh, last chip bin store. So, for my permission, root permission from this source IP that is last chip bin source has tried to update this event. So, everything, every API is made to your site, every API is made to your AWS account is logged here. See other part. Then let me just show you tomorrow yesterday's okay this is something that is yesterday's so here we can see create stack now here this is again today's i guess it's 25 fire this is today's so let me get. this is 24 delete policy so this root user from this source ip this is my source ip of my uh, yesterday's computer and at this time 4 50 pm i was trying to delete one policy in the im part and the event which is created the unique event id and in which region in us east one so you can uh, have a look on all the things like whatever this particular uh, person is trying to, to perform all this action from your team member you can have a look at the aws account today here also from here you can filter the name if you want to have from the resource type resource name event id aws key access like if you want to check a particular user uh, what this kind of person is trying to do then you can do that here you can define your time frame in which period you want to do you can also download this logs everything here so how to create a log so first of all you need to click on create a trail and here it will ask you the name 
say demo. Now, the second parameter is apply tail to all regions, yes or no. Now, which means like, do you want to enable this cloud trail uh, service to be applicable in all the AWS region, or you want to be a very specific with a single uh, region? Now, as per the best practices of AWS, it is recommended that you should, uh, you know, uh, use this service in all region, so that if our hacker or if any kind of person is trying to access to the service from another region is trying to penetrate your infrastructure through another region and that uh, thing is also logged so it is always recommended to use this into all region kind of thing then management event what kind of event uh, you want to read only what if the person is trying to do only read only operations write only prop operation or the all none so all you can see data events whatever the insight where you want to see the insights and whatever the things is occurred how you want to process the data i you just want to store into the s3 or you want to process up kind of events whenever it is comes if you want to trigger any kind of thing then you can process in the lambda function now we'll uh, will not use this insight part second is where you want to store this uh, that is store location so you need to provide either you need to provide into your s3 bucket that is do you want to create no if i select no then from the list uh, i have a multiple aws buckets available from this bucket i can select one let's say pro training and reconnect and in the advance if you want to provide the logs so the format will be whatever the uh, name i have given logs inside that there will be another folder aws logs inside that there is account id to well digit inside that there will be a option of cloud trail that is these logs are uh, based from the cloud trail and then the region from where it is captured so all the things will be here and then here just you can hit to the create now whatever the application you do whatever you do on this aws account everything will be stored in that bucket so this is what AWS Cloud Trail is, and prod training, and there is a fun folder which is already created logs inside that AWS logs this particular account id my that in that cloud trail and still there is no objects has been created so still waiting this is asia pacific so now if i go to the us region and try to do anything then there will be a folder once one more folder with the us east one if i go to the mumbai then there will be a folder ap south one and whatever the things that i will do in that particular region all the things will be maintained so once again cloud is a service which will help you to log to create an events or whatever uh, is happening in your aws account which will offer you one the people the developer the im user who is trying to do all this action and if somebody is trying to do on the internet from the, if hacker is trying to penetrate your system then you will get the ip address of that particular person and in which region where this kind of thing is trying to hit your site everything you will get a detailed information with this cloud trick will okay. you get a notification for notification again you need to uh, do some kind of uh, uh, processing like you get all the logs here right now you have two things to do the notification first you can send this kind of thing to the s3 and from s uh, sorry from lambda and from lambda you can trigger this notification or second thing that you can do is you can here deliver it to uh, cloud or log that is configure and deliver to cloud or unable to receive sns notification so here you can just click on configure which is the log group default log group you can click on continue now based on this log group whatever the notification that you have set it will be triggered so uh, we'll, i will just cancel for a single send, uh, instance and We'll just log in to the CloudWatch service. So this is the CloudWatch service over which you can monitor your all the AWS services. 
this is an overview section and from here you can configure everything now the first part is the dashboard a dashboard is something that you can create for a multiple dashboard and you can insert your data or uh, like a single dashboard for monitoring all the production account for monitoring all the test account or there is a one uh, dashboard to maintain all the ec2 instances uh, which is configured for your production account so here you can create a dashboard let me just dashboard the team or let's say now what kind of dashboard you want like uh, how you want to see your result uh, let's go with you can go with anyone configure now which part you want to configure there are a lot of services now basically i am currently in mumbai region uh, in mumbai region whatever services that i have used till now you can see here so based on this let's say i want to go with the s3 this is a, there are 10 matrices available now to which service to which uh, bucket i want to attach this kind of uh, logs there is number of objects in my bucket and bucket size so whenever i click this and if i say uh, months it is three months for a large period of time then for my these two buckets athena demo test bucket this kind of bucket size has been created and it has been modified so this bucket size has been created when on 34 2019 and at this time the standard bucket size is 13.7 k that is number of uh, the size of this bucket when it was created and the number of objects were four now as the time gradually increased at this moment i can say there were 7.64 mb of data and the number of objects will be five at this point the size of this bucket raised to 7.64 mb and the total number of size uh, number of buckets uh, objects is five which is maintained throughout the entire lifetime of this uh, bucket so in this way you can uh, create your buckets and have a look and once again demo let's try configure now let's do with the ec2 i don't have any ec2 instance running but okay the test environment is still uh, ready so here you can see for my test environment the test ec2 instance that we have created in our elastic load uh, sorry beanstalk for which you can have a look here that is network phase out network in did this read operation network hours how much cpu utilization you have made let's see the cpu utilization only so at this time the cpu utilization was reached to 3.26 percent out of 100 percent it has reached to 3.27 percent and then after five minutes uh, whatever the configuration that is at 210 the cpu utilization reached back to 1.93 percent now this is something that we have just created that's why we are getting only a very small information about this entire life cycle of this uh, ec2 instance but if we have used this ec2 instance for a very big long of time then you can specify the time weeks months days and based on that you would find here the results so you can create a widget based on this and this widget will appear on the dashboard right yes whenever i click on create widget you can get here the simplification so but let's how say this will generate the push notification like in case like cpu reaches like yeah. let's say more than 50 percent yeah yeah so that is a part which is you need to configure in the auto scaling or when you want to deliver to the log section now the second part here is i'll show you second part is alarm so from alarm you can send a notification so here you can click on create alarm now which you need to first select a which kind of matrix let's say on ec2 on this pre ec2 instance on the cpu utilization i want to have a matrix select that matrix okay now okay i have a question so you can only create alarm based on the selected widget or you can create alarm on anything without even selecting a widget uh, whatever the list of matrices that we have seen previously you can based on that you can create okay so it doesn't depend on the dashboard right yeah no no it's not depend on the dashboard if i want to edit this part uh, if i don't want to go with the cpu utilization if i want to go with another one then uh, let's say to my again ec2 instance pre-ec2 instance 
and let's say this time I'm not choosing the CPU utilization. This time I'm using CPU credit usage. Select this matrix, and based on this matrix, you can select. It doesn't matter what uh, is your in your dashboard. Dashboard part is separate, and notification part is separate. Okay. So, CPU credit. Whatever the description you want. When this credit uses reaches to one data point, that is, if you have reached to one uh, utilization, that is, if all from the six uh, credit that you get from the T2 micro, if you get uh, reached to the one credit usage, then you will get notification. So here you can see currently my usage is reached to. 0.258 only. So until it reaches to the one, it will don't throw me any notification. But it once it is reached that uh, limitation, then it will send me a notification. Now additional thing that is selecting an alarm. So alarm when it is okay, and select notification list. Now here you can create a new list, and here you can provide a name. Your yeah, email address here. Enter a topic credit out. So it only send notification to email, nothing else, right? Like of no. like okay, like phone or anything, SMS. No, no, no. Phone SMS that part is not uh, available. For that you need to do separate notification part. Okay. That that is also possible, but uh, yeah, you can do that because the uh, SMS part is only available in the North uh, US region. So you can have a use of that, but that part is completely different. You can hit on clear alarm, and it sends me a verification link. So once I have verified that link, then only I will get be able to. Yeah, you can see. If I click on confirm subscription, then I am uh, ready to use this service. View alarm. I refresh this part. Now. At any time when it reaches to one CPU credit, it will throw me a notification. Now, here is the direct option to add to the dashboard. Dashboard, like if you are already configured the dashboard and if you want to send it to that part, you can do. Now, coming back to the cloud trace section, when we are configuring this uh, load balancer and the cloud wash logs, so here we have logs. Now, in the log section. This is something that we have already seen in the VPC part, right? We at that time we have created this production log and we have entered all of our EC2 data. Do you remember that part? Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing you can do. You can create a new log group here. Action, create a new log group. Let's say demo. Okay, in this logger, you can create a log stream where from where you want or just let uh, this log group to create a log stream for you so from here you can select demo test so it will uh, it will give an im console where you want to configure this thing so th which means like this log group can have access to your all the details, all the uh, permissions that it can create a log stream and pull all the data from your uh, data. So it's creating one CloudWatch role, which allows this kind of CloudWatch service to have access to other AWS service. Now, once it is configured, that uh, validating your role here, or what it does. There is a problem with the role policy. Click on continue once again. View 
details view policy document policy string ap sas bundle demo test lock stream or ap sas one so what i will do I'll just copy this AWS logs episode one region my ID log group that is demo hyphen test log stream which is already been should be created now. So here what we can do is create a log stream. Let's give a name demo once again and to this log stream we can now send the data so name is demo here i can say edit this part Here to this part, and here I will say demo. Similarly, from this part to this part, demo. Allow. Now we are particularly defined one uh, log stream here. I hope it should match. Okay, this cloud watch role has been created, and now you can click on alarms to uh, do all these things. Our service. Create CloudWatch alarm for security and network related API gateway using cloud formation regular. So they have already ready-made template available through which you can create an alarm. Right? So in this way, you can create an alarm on your cloud trail on your CloudWatch service. So in the CloudWatch, we have seen the dashboard, the alarm, the logs. And from logs, you can now filter all these things. Like if I production log, do you have, have right? So in my log, this is production, which has already and uh, some kind of logs here, on which I can create on um, create metric filter. And these are the all the metrics that fall this ENI that is for this easy to install. I can say that if I want to filter this part. Then for this instances, I have zero matches found. From here, you can see there is 29 matches found. So when I was trying to uh, request this EC2 instance from the browser, uh, that is a port 80, it is got rejected. So here I can see why the reason behind it of for sending this kind of logs here. So now based on this also, you can create alarms like uh, Create a matrix filter and say reject. Drag one of this. Assign matrix, reject matrix name, uh, reject matrix. Create filter. Okay. Uh, now on this matrix, you can uh, create an alarm once again. So what should be the matrix? So currently there is. 29 uh you know errors if i say 10 and say so if it reaches to the 10 then it will throw me an error that it will throw me a notification that you can ha you have one uh, data that is bridged to that minimum threshold and you can have a look on that so it will throw me an ma ma email notification so this is cloud where you can track all this in apis made to your aws account and here you can say this is login feature is on. If you don't want, then you can, uh, once your lab session is done, you can just log it off and delete this part. Otherwise, this is chargeable. This doesn't come with the AWS free tire. And which cloud was service also, if you don't want, then you can delete every part, right? Any question in the cloud watch and the cloud uh, tray? So we need to configure this to get more detailed metrics and you said this is chargeable. So, but there was like three features as well, right? For metrics. 
yeah, you can create a matrix here. That is a free feature. Again, creation of this dashboard, getting the data from the, uh, you know, normal usage in five minutes of interval, whatever you get, if you are having a free basic plan, then this kind of things you will get it for free. You don't need to uh, pay any extra. But if you want a detailed monitoring with every single minute of uh, interval, then that part will be chargeable. Okay, like creating an alarm and other stuff, right? Uh, no, no. Like here we are getting the all the CPU uh, utilization, like currently, whatever the time it is. So based on that, this logs that we get here, whatever the data we, we see here, that we get in five minutes of interval. So whatever currently you are doing on your system, you will get the logs of it after five minutes. That is something that AWS offers for free. Now, if you want a detailed monitoring with every single minute, whatever you do now, if you want it after one minute, then that part will be extra chargeable. Okay. So this is all about the cloud watch and the cloud trade. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so this five minute is like a default which contain all the details, but it will I yes. mean it will update after five minutes. Yeah, this is something that AWS has already configured whenever you create an AWS account. Okay. And which is applicable to all the services. If you go to the EC2 section, then whatever the I don't have EC2 now. But this is the meter instance, and if you see the monitoring, then also this is based on the basic monitoring that is five minutes of interval. If I enable this enable detail monitoring, then I can get the data. Uh, in every single minute, whatever is happening, the CPU utilization, the read access, everything, the network in and out, you can see here. The credit balance, the credit balance has reached to 30%, and the credit usage has reached to 0.258, that is something that we have seen, 248, something we have seen. So, by this, you can see how many CPU utilization, how many, everything you can have. Showing the data for last one hour, if you want to see from the last one week, and also you will get a data here you can do all these things like for every AWS service you get this kind of data whenever you configure you don't need to select a, a while creation of this resource that I want a basic monitoring for this particular service for a certain service you need to do but for most of the services you get it by default okay yep. So our next service is uh, we have seen cloud Genesis cloud wash cloud tray. Then we will see now first raw 53. So raw 53 is not DNS service, whatever the application you have designed, how will you connect to your domain? So in that, in this part, we will see that. Amazon Route 53 is a highly available and scalable domain name system web service. With Route 53, you have control to register a new domain. If you have already, if you want to create a new domain, then you can register on the AWS. If you have already existing an AWS, uh, sorry, if you are already having a domain from another register, that is GoDaddy, Freenom, or any other domain provider, if you have, have any kind of thing, and if you want to transfer that domain to AWS, then that part is also possible. Then with the Route 53, you can route internet traffic to the resources for your domain. That is uh, whatever the resources that you have created, you can link this uh, resources directly to your domain. For example, you have one EC2 instance, then that EC2 instance you can connect to your domain. So AWS Route 53 offers you that feature. Route 53 also gives you one option to check the health of your resources. So if you are, uh, so if you are easy to instance or if your resources are healthy, then only it will, uh, you know, pass that request to their ECT. So what we, which means that whenever request come to your route 53, it's a DNS. So whenever you, your domain is hit, it will first come to your route 53 section. And route 53 then checks whether your resources is healthy or not, whether your EC2 instance is healthy or not, whether your SC uh, bucket configuration is healthy or not. If it is healthy, then it will send a message, then it will send that particular request to that EC2 server. So it has the capability to check your health of your resource. 
that is register a domain name you can register your domain names or transfer a domain name route internet traffic to the resource for your domain you can route your resources directly to your internet your web servers your s3 bucket configuration your elp endpoint etc check the health of your resources uh, before sending the traffic to the uh, resources aws software has a capability to check the health of your resources similarly as our like elp for elp also we have a health check the same health check you can also provide it here so there are certain concept with the route 50 that is domain name a domain name is something such as example.com uh, aws.amazon.com any kind of domain.com.in.org.net these are the domains a top level domain is called as the .com.org.net these are the top level domain whereas .guru dot, uh, .info dot, uh, you know there are other kind of domains available so these are organic or general type of domains but top level domain is always responsible to send a query to the general or you know below the top level of domain so when we talk about the domain system there is one root domain system which is uh, .com or that is a top level domain .com .net .org and under this domain we have sub domain that is a general uh, level domain or organic domain we can say that can be any domain dot uh, es dot cs dot ka anything domain registrar domain registrar is a company which uh, registers a domain on your name uh, which uh, whatever the domain you want to register so there is a one company who registered domain for you and this company maintains all the dns uh, parameters for you so basically what is dns do you know what is dns yeah as a domain name service yeah what exactly does so it, it checks basically whether this domain has been registered in the past or not and what's available what not and register your domain with all the details yeah uh, that is a part done that is a part done by the domain register that is not a process of dns so what is a dns a domain name system uh, it basically do the mapping part like for every server we have one ip address now when we say mapping of this ip address to your uh, you know eco uh, your friendly name that is example.com google.com etc so mapping of this name uh, mapping of this number to your name is done by the dns now whenever you hit to the site google.com so basically it is never get hit to the google.com whatever the ip address which is attached behind this google.com it is reflected to that now for us under remembering all these uh, ip addresses is of course very difficult for a google.com for facebook.com for any instagram.com remembering this ip address is not uh, easy so what we have we have this uh, friendly name system example.com google.com facebook.com now what dns does is whenever we pass such kind of names google.com facebook.com it map it gets uh, forwarded to whatever the ip address it is allocated whatever the ip address it is attached it is hidden to that site okay now so there are we yeah. created this vpc infrastructure right where we expose the load balancer uh, via internet publicly so we need to like map this load balancer uh, yes. uh, name to the domain yes you need to map this load balancer to your domain and every load balancer is again a domain name it's again a dns name so that do dns name is also associated with one ip address okay. but that is the what kind of can we map to another dns right sorry once again i mean since you said load balancer is also a dns name so we can still use another domain name right when one dns domain name can be associated with another domain name right yes this that domain name is under the aws so for example you have google.com domain available so to this uh, google.com uh, you can map that elb dns endpoint so whenever you hit to the google.com that will be hitted whatever you uh, have attached to that elb endpoint okay so let's say if one company is using uh, let's say company abc.com is using aws cloud infrastructure right so all their internal pages application we don't want to expose it 
through AWS. So we can map it with the domain name. So all the internal will also be redirected through the domain name or AWS uh, cloud path will still be shown. AWS cloud, no, there will be never cloud path will be shown. Even if you just pass, uh, if you attach an IP address behind that domain, then also on the browser, you will always find the name of your domain, right? Uh, whenever we say google.com we always see uh, doesn't matter what happens whatever search you do we always see google.com in your browser right yeah here if i say google.com then doesn't matter whatever the ip address which is associated with it it always shows me google.com similarly whenever uh, uh, so for example if i have this google.com which is authorized to me and behind this uh, google.com if i attach that uh, elb endpoint that is a dns endpoint then also on the my browser it will be always shown as a google.com it will be redirecting to the elb endpoint but on the browser it will be always shown the google.com or whatever the path be after that google.com that particular dns is mapped with your domain so that dns will be never shown on your browser that is whether you have created on the google on the uh, AWS or on the Azure or any kind of server that file is never shown on the browser. This is a job done by the browser, not the DNS. Okay. okay. So now how DNS works. Now there are top level domains uh, similar to the, to the top level domain. There is a root DNS and there is a regional DNS. So root DNA is something whenever you hit to the top level domain that is dot com or uh, whatever the register you have that is Amazon is a register then GoDaddy is a register. So whenever you register this kind of IP addresses and it gets it is considered as a root DNS. Then what happens if I if I from the browser try to hit this Google dot com it will check at the root DNS whether it is it has that IP address allocation available or not. If it has, then it will throw me the message, whatever it will throw me the response from that particular web server. If that root server don't have this information, then it will pass to the regional DNS service. That is, it may be an Indian web server. They, they are Indian DNS service is a you know, regional DNS service available. So it will then pass to that DNS uh, regional DNS service and from that re regional DNS service it will map to your resources. So there is a dot com and inside that dot com if there is anything uh, resources that you have created if there is another domain you have let's say you have domain of dot co dot in which has a top level domain as dot com. So it will first check with the dot com if it has that information then it will respond to back if that information is not available then it will send to the dot co dot in and I will get that information. So this is how the DNS works. All the loads is never sent to your root or DNS system. It always sent to the regional DNS system, whether it checks and if it is available, then it will send, otherwise it will not send. So the first DNS concept is the alias record. So an alias record is like a four digit or a IP address, which is a human readable format like a uh, www.app.google.com or test.google.com so whatever that uh, you want to provide a subdomain to your domain you can do it by alias record and alias record is something like uh, you can provide your ip range here if you have four digits of uh, ip address available that you want to associate with your domain you can provide it here if you have any kind of endpoint then you can attach with alias record now there are two types of alias record. One is a uh, AAAA type of record and there is one single A record. And A record is something which is associated with IP version 4 and uh, 4 times A that is AAAA record which is associated with IP version 6 record. So whatever the configuration you have, whatever the attachment is that you will do, based on that you can select this alias record. Domain name system, we have just seen what is domain name system. Uh, what is root domain, what is regional domain in system and how our process works. Now, hosted zone. Now, hosted zone is purely part of a AWS. What is S3 bucket? Yeah, Nirit, uh, can you just describe what is S3 bucket? S3 bucket? Yeah. 
Yeah, bucket. Yeah, so basically S3 is a service where you can hold the objects, right? So bucket is kind of storage place to for the objects or storage. Right. So bucket is nothing but a container to store all your objects, correct? Yeah. Similarly, Postgresql is a container that will store all your records. For example, if you have registered a domain called google.com, for this google.com on AWS, you get one container called as hosted zone. And in this hosted zone, now you can configure multiple routing policy, you can create multiple subdomains or whatever you want to do. A hosted zone is something that will offer a particular domain system. Like within your AWS account, you may have a multiple domains, google.com, facebook.com, instagram.com. Within the same AWS account, you have, let's consider these three uh, domains. Now to attach a policy, to attach uh, subdomains in that particular domain, you, there is a hosted zone which will separate these three kinds of routing policy. So in short, a hosted zone is something that is a container which hold multiple uh, record set. It has, a, uh, it has a capability to hold multiple record policies. You'll see this practically. Then we have name server. A name server is something that comes with a root DNS. So every register, whether it's a GoDaddy or a AWS or Google, every register will give you uh, four name servers. Now using this name servers, you will get a DNS endpoint. For example, whenever you register a domain, let's say you have registered google.com. So who has registered this domain uh, for you? That, uh, that domain register will provide its own name server. So whenever requests come to your do uh, domain, it will be first, uh, it will come via this name servers. So name servers are considered as a top level domain. So with this top, uh, all the top level domain .com .org will be a part of this name server. And then we have record set. That is uh, all the routing policies that we have in our AWS, you can create a record of that. So what is record set that is based on the routing policy? We have five routing policies here. One is simple routing policy, failover routing policy, geolocation routing policy, latency routing policy, and weighted routing policy. Now this is very important uh, if you are going for any interview or this if you are going for ex examination certification, then this question is mandatory. They will ask you definitely how many routing policies is available and what is the future of this routing policy? The same question is asked in the exam, uh, in the interview also. There will be definitely one question uh, in this interview section you will find in the route 50, that is how many routing policy you have and what is the specification with that routing policy. So simple routing policy. Simple routing policy is something that which is very default one, used to route internet traffic to a single resource to perform a given function of for your domain. For example, if you have one server, then you, you connect to that server to your domain. That is a user whenever try to hit to your uh, domain, it gets reflected by the route 53 and it's sent to the one resource, whatever it is. There's no change, you cannot have multiple things here. If you want to send all the traffic to a single resource, then you can use a single routing policy. Second is fail, failover routing policy. Failover routing policy are used when you have to create active passive setup. Like for example, you have two infrastructure. Let's say one in the Mumbai and one in the London. Okay. Now, if due to any reason your infrastructure is down, Mumbai infrastructure is down, then you can make a passive connection active and send the traffic. For example, there are multiple users hitting to your site, which is reflected by this route 53. Now there is one active connection, there is passive connection. All the connections to your, uh, your, you know, your main uh, infrastructure is US East one. So whatever the, your requests are coming, it should go to the US East one. In case there is a failure of the infrastructure that your infrastructure is not working, then this active becomes passive and passive becomes active. And the passive from all the connections now will be sent to the US West one. So whatever now request is coming, it will be diverted from the route 53 to your second region. So this is failover routing policy that you create active passive relation, active passive setup here. Whenever the traffic is uh, active, whenever that infrastructure is available, it, at that time it will go to your active connection 
if that uh, is failed to perform this kind of action that is uh, if your health check is down then it will send all the traffic to your passive infrastructure well, did you get this part yeah uh, just remember this uh, routing part is very important this is completely thoracic but we have a lab session but that is just a demo but from exam point of view and from interview point of view this route 53 part is very important you will get definitely one question okay the third one is the latency based routing policy the latency based routing policy allows you to create a route traffic based on the lowest network latency for your end user for example you have multiple user which is hitting to your site and you have now two infrastructure one is the us east one and one in the us west one so if i am a if uh, if the requests are coming from the us or let's say the requests are coming from the uk okay you have two infrastructure in us east one and west one and the requests are coming from the uk now from uk traveling to the us east one if it takes 50 milliseconds to reach to your destination and get the information and to your us west one if it takes 150 milliseconds and it will check the latency of both the region and it will send a uh, request to the least latency provider so now here the request will be always sent to the us is one if that uh, if there is any configuration uh, problem or is there in the data center issues with the us is one and the, the latency increases to 200 millisecond then all the requests will be diverted to your us west one so these are the different routing policies. These are the routing different strategies that you can implement in your infrastructure based on the routing. Now you have one infrastructure from where multiple uh, from multiple regions you are getting a request. You have customers worldwide available, US, UK, Australia, and you have multiple data centers for that. So now from all these different customers, whenever they hit to your site, whatever the lowest latency available, your request will be forwarded to that region. Okay. Then we have weighted routing policy. That is, you use when you want to route internet traffic to your resources based on the location of that user. Uh, sorry, this is not the correct one. So weighted routing policy is something that you weight uh, how many traffic you want to send. So out of your total traffic, here eighty percent of the traffic will be sent to one location, uh, US East one, and twenty percent of the traffic will be sent to the US West one. So based on number of uh, traffic you get per second, all the requests will be made to 80% of the traffic will be made to your, your east one and 20% of the traffic will be made to your west one. So this is something the weighted routing policy. And here you can change whatever you want, 70, 30, uh, 40, 60, 80, 20, etc. And the last one is the geographical uh, geolocation routing policy that is based on the geographical location you can send your data. For example, you have US customer and you have one US region for your infrastructure. So all the requests which are coming from the US region will be diverted to your US East one. If you have Indian customers too, then whatever the Indian customer is trying to access to your website, that will be sent to the AP South one. Or you can also do, if you have US East one infrastructure, then if uh, you have designed your infrastructure in US East one, but your customer is only from the UK. Now you can uh, say that uh, people coming, if your request that is coming from the UK region can come to my US East one. Okay, here you specify from which region you want your request to be available. Now, if someone is trying from the Africa, then this kind is trying to hit your domain, then that kind of request will not be supported. Okay. So these are the five routing policy. Can you just repeat one second all the fire routing policy? What we have seen so far? Uh, yeah, latency. Yes. Uh, geolocation, latency. Based on the latency, it will send the traffic. Yeah. Geolocation, based on the geolocation where the, we have set the location, only that particular request will be sent. Like, uh, you know the VPN part. What is VPN? Virtual private network. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, in India, we cannot use the HBO, the, uh, the HBO site for the Game of Thrones and whatever the streaming channel we have for the HBO, we cannot access from the India. So what we can do is we create a virtual private network and that will be considered as a I am from the US region. 
so now yeah, i am scooping the ip right yeah scooping the ip so okay. that part i can do but geolocation is uh, something that this kind of uh, companies has restricted that only the region from india or uh, sorry from the us people is only able to try and to our service right right so we have geolocation then latency and, and simple and failover right simple is something that uh, if you want to connect to a single resource you can use the simple routing policy right failover is something that is active passive if you have yes. to kind of in connection if you want to make and in case your infrastructure is down then you can send all the traffic to another region mm -hmm. then and we have weighted. sorry which one last one is weighted as per the yeah, traffic can the weight of your application yeah okay so let's see how to create this kind of thing yeah you can, can see that continue out. the lab next session or uh we have it will take another just 30 seconds 30 minutes 30 minutes yeah i'm not able to focus actually it's too late here oh, okay okay then we can continue on tomorrow maybe or directly on monday okay yeah so yeah let me know if you want to do tomorrow others we can do on monday okay okay fine sure all right thanks lalit yeah and please okay. send me the uh, the recording okay sure yeah all right thanks